Matthew 18 who's wringing the neck of the guy who owes him $10 after he's been forgiven $10 million and what happens to him? He gets cut to pieces in the end because he really didn't know anything about forgiveness. So I said to her, you got to. I don't remember how that one got resolved. She was just really angry at me that I said that in the setting of that couple relationship. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, then you're truly my disciples. Not just if you get interested in me on a, you know, Youth for Christ weekend or let's get excited and walk the aisle and make a good start like the seed that's sown on the ground. Spring up with joy and then the sun comes out and you wither. No. Nope. If you continue, you are truly my disciple. Now I'll get the good news here. Those whom God has justified will be kept by God for final salvation. And we've looked at this text enough times that maybe we should look at it one more time to underline its relevance for perseverance. God causes all things to work together for good, to work together for good. For those who love God. Now the all things here. Working together for good. This good here is defined specifically here. As. Those whom he foreknew he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So there's the good ultimately. Everything that God is doing to you and permitting to be done to you is serving to conform you ultimately to Jesus. That's, that's what he's saying. It's all working to that good. Not the good of prosperity. Not the good of health. We're all going to die. And we all could lose our job and God would do us no wrong. But the good that he guarantees to do for us is this one. He predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son so that he'd be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he called. And those whom he called, he justified. And here's the perseverance. Those whom he justified, he glorified. There it is. Nobody drops out who's justified. So I'm standing up and I'm talking to six, seven hundred people, 95 percent of whom I pray God are justified by faith alone and born again. And I'm saying whoever does these things will not enter into the kingdom. And God takes that warning and by his spirit applies it to the elect so that they are vigilant. And persevere so that this never ceases to be true. The justified will be glorified. Nobody is justified and then lost. Nobody. So if you are a justified sinner today, you will be forever. That's why it says, those who be justified, he glorified. So what should we say if God is for us? Who can be against us? Nobody can be successfully against us. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not with him freely give us all things? So now we simply draw attention to the connection with perseverance. It's the logic. Not sparing his son provides the foundation for the assurance and the reality that everything will be ours, including perseverance. John 10, 26 to 30. You do not believe because you're not of my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. And they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. 
My Father who has given them to me is greater than everybody and everything. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I and the Father are one. You can't get out of my hand and you can't get out of the Father's hand because we're one and we have committed ourselves to give you eternal life that you will never perish and we will raise you up at the last day. Oh, enjoy that text. Know yourself there. Revel in that. Bathe in that. Go to bed with that. Get up with that. Preach that to yourself. I've heard his voice. Have you not? And only his sheep hear his voice. I have come to him. He laid down his life for the sheep. My sins are covered. And if he didn't spare his own son, but lay down his life for me, will he not freely give me all things, including this rock-solid security in his hand? Oh, what a valiant people we should be. We shouldn't go limping through life as though, oh, poor us Christians, we get so persecuted in America. This used to be our country. It was never our country. Our country is in heaven. America comes, America goes. Russia comes, Russia goes. China comes, China goes. We are the children of God. You go limping through life. Oh, poor Christian. We're not being treated nice. You're not supposed to be treated nice. You're supposed to be killed. We are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. It's this absolute rock-solid chain of assurance that those who are justified will be glorified should make you walk with your head high. Broken for your sin, not swaggering through American media saying like a right-wing talk show host, it's our country. It's not. Let's be different. Let's be radically different. Boldly different. This doctrine should make us so confident, so powerful, so humbly different. I love this text because there's a piece of it that's on my mother's and now my father's gravestone. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be you, God. And according to his, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again. And those whom he caused to be born again never are anything other than born again. To a living hope. Yes, it is living, undying. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yes, it was his triumph over death. It secures the future certainty and security. To obtain an inheritance. He caused me to be born again to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, not fading. All that's supposed to signify security, permanence. Reserved in heaven for you. Now, so far we've got the inheritance firmly reserved for you. Now you get reserved yourself who are protected or kept by the power of God through faith for that salvation ready to be revealed. So it is kept for you and you are kept for it. Now notice something. This this is the phrase right here that's on the gravestone. It's the old version, kept by the power of God. So when my mother died in 19... 74, and my dad and I went out to the graveside, to the business place.